take you down lower price and, and it's just like you had low price on the stuff anyway and it's like you know here to, let me give you this and uh, and I'll get blessed you know and I, they would just get messed up and it's like okay I'll take it <laughs> it was awesome you know a Samaritan's purse show up in my driveway I had uh, uh, a ministry from a United Methodist Church show up and they took furniture and and uh, another organization that took knickknacks and paddy wax and give a dog a bone and you know it was they were a gift from God because I was struggling I felt like I was like couldn't couldn't breathe I felt like I was suffocating it and, and like God gave me these people to 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 help me get rid of the stuff and it was amazing it was amazing like like I just, it just put a huge smile on my face. So as I get rid of everything and I, and I moved three hours away, God opened the door to go stay with um, friends of mine's um, grandfather, and 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 my friends actually lived right down the road, and so I was close to their ministry. I was going to help them out. You know, I didn't know what it looked like. I just did what what was right in front of me and what door was open, and I went with that door. So, you know, I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. You know, people people don't know what it looks like to step out into ministry full time. You know, they say, well, well, we we're all called to full time ministry, and it's right in front of us. And yes, it is. But some of us are called to go into all of the world, and I believe that we really all are called to a degree of that. What does that look like in your life? It's like, what is God saying for each and every person? You know. Um, I think we um, we look to the world way too much, and you know, and we're all in a work in progress, and and that's not no con condemnation on anyone. So, but I heard so much, and like I got so, like I I I was a a person who wanted approval by people, and I felt insecure and unworthy, and had no value, and. And I'm stepping out into what I really know God is calling me to and I really don't have a lot of support. You know, I, I have some friends that are lifting me up to what they know and they're still like not sure, like, yeah, are you sure you're here from God because, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I didn't want to be homeless. Like, I was not my, that was not my cup of tea. Uh-uh. No, I didn't know. I didn't want to be on someone's doorstep, you know, begging for money or begging for a place to stay. I, I, I was, I was fearful that I would become a charity case, and I didn't want anybody to think that of me. Like that was like my, oh, uh, that was like my fear was that people would think that I was a charity case, you know, and and that's not the case, you know. I'm, I'm laying my life down for what I know what I believe and God's had Jesus come to this earth and he sent his disciples out two by two to all over the world <coughs> and some with not even a change of clothes so what does that look like in our society that scares the hell out of people I'm just being frank with you and it scared me but I did it because that's what I was called to do. And so I laid my life down. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not looking back. I, I'm, I'm just going to dive into this thing. You know what? Sink or swim. And um, I didn't know what it looked like. And so one night, I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm crying myself to sleep. And, and I'm like, God, you know, I am not beneath getting a job. You know, people are telling me that Paul worked. You know, he was a tent maker. There should be something you should be doing. You know, I heard so much so from so many people. And there was so much uh, chatter going on. And it was all, like, voices all over. And, like, my own and, and the enemy and people and and I, I couldn't separate what I was supposed to be hearing. And and I think God took me three hours away from a lot of people to, to be able to find His voice and separate it from everything else. And so I cried myself to sleep that night. And I said, God, like, 
Wow, it wrecks me still think about that day. I said, I am not beneath getting a job. But you moved me three hours away from everything that I knew and the place where I was living wasn't necessarily, you know, it wasn't a lot of manufacturing companies or anything like that in the retail mall. I mean, it was like a 15 minute drive from the house of 20 minutes. You know, I would have spent more money in gas and then I would have needed to pay for room and board on top of that and, and it just wouldn't have worked. And I'm like, God, like, you know my heart and I don't want to to be a loafer. I don't want to be a charity case. I, my heart is it. if you want me to work, I want to go to work. Show me how to do this. Show me how to walk this out. And I cried myself to sleep that night. I'm just being real with you because this is hard. It is not a cakewalk and it is not for the faint hearted. And the very next morning, Grandpa slides two $50 bills across the table at breakfast and he said, these are not for me. He said, I would love to give them to you. These are from your, your daddy in heaven. These are from your papa. And your father wants you to know that he is your provider and he will provide for you. And he slid two $50 bills across the table. Huh. Grandpa didn't know I cried myself to sleep the night before. Grandpa didn't know that I was struggling financially. that built my faith that day and it shut the mouth of those voices that I was hearing that weren't from God you know and there is no condemnation on anybody that was and that has spoken to my life because it's iron sharpening iron and we do what we know we we don't always know how to walk this out and that is okay you know I, I am so blessed and so thankful that, that God gave me a mentor and best friend and a mama and a sister that um, helped me to to uh, take everything that is spoken to me and I take it back to God and I ask God like what are you thinking Papa what what is your take on this is this from you or is this just words of wisdom from from the world you know, or is this someone's opinion? Or is this tainted by someone's thoughts? Because when we hear from God, the stuff that's going on in our head, it filters the word of God through. And so you need to always take it back to God and you need to keep searching your heart, asking God to remove any pride, any jealousy, any anger, any frustration, any unforgiveness. Like whatever it looks like, you need to love the unloved and you need to be able to love yourself. And you need to be able to love that person that's in front of you unconditionally. And you can't do that when you got junk going on. Doesn't mean that you stop doing what you know. But in the process, you're a work in progress too. And you've got to know that, you know what, sometimes what comes out is not necessarily godly words. Even though you heard it from God, it gets tainted. And so I just want to encourage you to keep stepping towards God and keep embracing Him and keep listening to Him and keep speaking what He says to you. And even what you think He's saying, you keep speaking it, but you keep checking your heart. And you keep allowing people to speak in, into your life, but you take that all back to God. And you ask God, like, what are you saying, Papa? because um, I'm not sure because when it comes down to the end of the day you need to be standing on the rock of Christ and not on the words of man and you need to know that I am responsible for what I do and I cannot put blame on anyone else and I can't even blame God because I am responsible for my own life I am responsible for my own walk and I have free will and I, I make choices. And and when when the day ends, everything I did today, 
really comes down to what did I do and did I act accordingly to what God wanted me to and did I allow God to walk with me you know that's, that's the heart of the Father and so I want to I want to end on this that you know, over the next six months, I struggled, and I believe the reason why I struggled, because when I when I originally was stepping out of where I lived, I was actually called by God to go to Tanzania for three weeks, and I allowed finances to get in my way, and I had the money, but I didn't have the faith to believe that God would provide. I was stepping, but I had fear. And I allowed that fear to, to dictate my heart and allowed that to keep me from going to Tanzania. And I believe that because I chose to not step that part out, I believe that doors didn't open the way they were going to open or should have opened. And I believe that that's why I struggled. And I believe that, you know, we have free will and we choose or we don't choose. You know, God puts things in our heart. And as we come in alignment with Him, His heart becomes alignment with us. And and He gives us the strength. But He will not force His will on you. You know, I used to think that He would. But when I, um, when I was committing suicide, my car was going up an embankment. I actually thank God for finally giving me the courage to, to do this. That was the last words that I remember saying. And um, my car, literally, it was like the hand of God grabbed a hold of my car and turned it around and pulled it back onto the highway. No, I mean, it literally, I, I can't explain what happened in that moment. I know my car completely stopped. It didn't buck. It's a five-speed car. You know, when you, when you, you hit a stall, it didn't stall. It just completely shut off. And I was heading in the opposite direction, right in the middle of the highway. And I heard the audible voice, and he says, You can continue to be stupid, but I have a plan for your life. You know, I, I struggled for a long time until last summer. That I didn't feel that I had a choice in the call of my life. And that, that you know, maybe there was something to the predestined thing that... You know that that God would force His will on you when it came down to it, but I don't believe so. I believe He knew that my heart's desire was not to kill myself. My heart's desire was to stop the pain, and He did. He completely took all pain away that day. The depression was completely gone. I had a new outlook on life. I was filled with the Holy Spirit at that moment. Like I believe that at that moment, life came into me. Where there was death, life came in. The person I knew that day prior to the accident, or the, the what it should have been an accident, that person completely died. That Trina that I knew prior to that day completely died. And the person that I know today, the person I am today, is totally a new person. And I believe it's because Christ lives in me fully, 100%. And yes, I'm a work in progress. But I truly, like, life came into me. Life came into me like that day with Peter when he stood on that boat. And he, he got that aha moment and he realized who he was. He was Peter. And on this rock he would stand and the gates of hell would not prevail. That is what I felt happened to me that day. And on this rock, I do stand. And on this rock, you will stand. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Because Jesus Christ lives in us and is rising up inside of us. And he is a conqueror and he is not a grasshopper. And he lives through us. You know, his last prayer was before he went to the cross. His last prayer for you and I was that God would take us through the things of our life 
and not take us out of the situations in our life. That, that we would become one with Jesus and God. That this body would be his vessel and that he would reign and rule through us, with us, not just for us. But he wants relationship with you and with me and between us. And that's his heart. Is His heart is nothing but love and relationship. And he loves you just as much as he loves me. And so I want to end on this. That I pray that God would give you an aha moment. And turn your life around in such a way that you are running on fire, sold out. And listening for the, the what God is saying for you hearing what people say and continually taking it back to God. Continually hearing for other people and speaking life into people and not being afraid that you're not hearing from God. Step into what God has for you. And he said we would edify, encourage, and uplift. And he said we were all called to prophesy. We were all called to heal the sick, to set the captives free, to, to deliver people from demons. To resurrect the dead. To heal the sick. And so, I believe that what we're getting ready to walk into is such a precipice. Hang on. Sit down. Buckle up your seat. And enjoy the ride. Because when you have God, when you have Jesus, when you have the Holy Spirit, all three come one package. They are all in one. And when they live inside of you, it's an adventure of a lifetime that is worth the wait. So God bless you.